Have you ever wondered how to spin up a Kubernetes cluster in minutes with everything you need for production, including day-to operations? Or how to manage your cluster seamlessly across hybrid and multi-cloud environments? Stick around and I'll show you how the Nutanix Kubernetes platform does just that, making Kubernetes easy and scalable no matter where you're running it. Hello, I'm Neman with the Nutanix Technical Marketing Engineering team and today we will walk through the process of setting up a Nutanix Kubernetes platform management cluster on the Nutanix cloud platform. So first, let's take a quick look at an architecture diagram to understand more. The management cluster is where you would install NKP. It is self-managed, which means that it can manage its own node provisioning and deployment through a Kubernetes sub-project called Cluster API. Then you have managed clusters, which are workload clusters. The infrastructure, lifecycle, and the platform applications running on these clusters are managed by the NKP management cluster. Also, you can attach any certified Kubernetes cluster to the management cluster. But in this case, NKP will only manage the applications and not the full stack Kubernetes lifecycle, such as provisioning and upgrades. This will be the first in a series of videos on NKP. In this video, we will explore how to create a management cluster. So let's get started. We will be working on a Linux machine to download the necessary binaries and running the commands needed to get NKP up and running. We will need either Docker or Podman as a container engine to bootstrap NKP. Here, we have installed Docker and ensure it is working. We have also authenticated with Docker Hub as we will be pulling images from it and we can avoid hitting rate limits. The NKP binary has been installed as well with version 2.12. This is available from the Nutanix portal downloads page. You will also notice the pre-built Rocky Linux operating system image here. This has already been uploaded to Nutanix Prism Central. In this demo, we will be using this out-of-the-box image but you can bring your own OS image as well. For the entire list of other prereqs and supported software versions, please refer to the official documentation. Now, switching back to the terminal, we verify there is a SSH key present. This can be really handy if you need SSH access to the Kubernetes nodes to troubleshoot any failures. Great, so let me go ahead and run the NKP create cluster command. NKP supports a variety of infrastructure providers like vSphere and all the major public clouds. It can even run on bare metal. For now, let's select Nutanix. And as you can see, it is a single command which brings up a guided installation menu. Let's enter the Prism Central details and the user used to authenticate during the installation process. The operator user here will be an admin user. This will fetch the relevant information from the Nutanix cluster APIs. We can select which Nutanix project the Kubernetes nodes have to be a part of, which would be very valuable for IT teams in enforcing governance policies and quotas. Choose the subnet for the VMs. Note that we can select overlay subnets within VPCs, but we will select a VLAN subnet for now. We enter a few more details like a name for the NKP cluster, and an unused IP address reserved for the Kubernetes API server. Let's select the OS image that we uploaded earlier. We can specify a load balancer range of IP addresses, mainly used for the ingress service, but also for services like NDK. Make sure this is reserved as well and not included in the IPAM pool. We can go ahead and select the defaults for storage configuration. The hypervisor attached volume group uses the hypervisor's internal network for IO traffic. This is more secure than iSCSI sessions set up over an external switch. Let's pick the NKP demo storage container to host the persistent volumes. The container has been configured with efficiency features like compression and dedo. The ingress hostname is an option field here. If you plan to use it, Ensure that you have a DNS entry added that points to the load balancer IP address we added earlier. We will not be setting any values for Acme and Ingress certificate today. We will also leave the registry empty for now. 
It would be a good idea to enter your Docker Hub credentials here to avoid any rate limiting you might face, which we have already done at the beginning of this video. Entering the SSH key we generated earlier. And that's it. Let's go ahead and create the NKP management cluster. This will create a bootstrap cluster in a Docker container, then installs cluster API in it, which really provides a Kubernetes native way to create, manage, and update clusters. This will further interact with the Nutanix infrastructure APIs to create the NKP cluster and further automate cluster lifecycle management. If everything goes well, we should have the cluster created and the kubeconfig file available in less than 10 minutes. After that, the commander installation begins. Commander is a fleet management component of NKP. It delivers platform apps such as centralized observability, logging, cost management, governance, better operation insights, and truly makes NKP clusters production ready. Let me speed up the video a bit. When the process is complete, let's copy the command displayed and execute it. Now that's convenient. Then we grab the URL and credentials and log in with it. So I have the NKP management cluster here. Note that this is the starter cluster that is created by default. Once we apply the NKP ultimate license, the UI gets updated to unlock the full capabilities of the platform. We can also switch back to the terminal and manage this cluster with my kubectl commands. After we set the kubeconfig file, we can issue kubectl commands against my cluster. That was easy. So we have seen how to use the prompt based installation. But if you're an advanced user, you would want additional customizations like setting the number of CPU cores or memory for the worker nodes or configuring a private registry mirror instead of public registries, especially in an air gap environment, which is why NKP allows you to create clusters directly from the command line. The dash H option gives you a list of all the available flags. This can be integrated into your automation workflows to rapidly spin up clusters. Just ensure that you set the self-managed flag here if you plan to create a management cluster as shown in this demo. So that wraps up the NKP management cluster installation. NKP runs upstream Kubernetes, ensuring that you're using a consistent, standardized version that works seamlessly across any environment. This flexibility prevents vendor lock-in, allowing you to move applications across different environments without reconfiguration or compatibility issues. If you would like to try NKP yourself, head over to the test drive site and don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss any new videos. See you next time.